All right, welcome to your practice this morning or afternoon, wherever you happen to be. And a nice way to, to work into the back muscles is to have your feet up. So we will work with the feet up at the wall and the back has a blanket at the very top under the brain and simply brain versus the brain stem. So you wanna notice that the bulk of the, the weight of your head feels as if it kind of feeds down into the blanket height. And I would encourage you for this bridge pose today, these layers of bridge to start with that blanket and then perhaps you will move it um, aside. But as we push our feet into the wall, separate the feet so that you have a fairly wide a separation with the feet, wider than hips distance. And then notice how the knees kind of poke outwards, right? So the knees poke out. It's not a straight line of events from your pelvis up to the knees or vice versa. And so with that opportunity, we can't really put a block centered because there's not a, there's just too wide of a space. So as I put the hands onto my legs, I'm going to reach my hands up so that my kind of the outer tip of the shoulders is lifted. And that gets a feeling that when I press into my legs, I can also start to move my back further down, not necessarily all the way down the base of the spine, but getting a furthering of the deepening pressure of the back. And just be careful that you're not causing discomfort into that back space or undue pressure, but you're working on kind of smoothing out into the back. So now let the elbows relax and let the hands slide down so they're easily touching the thighs. However, your elbows are resting on the ground. And inhale, belly breath. So let the abdomen expand. And exhale, belly towards the spine. You might close your eyes. Feel how movement of the abdomen is more than a belly, right? It does move some of the viscera. You can feel muscles guiding with that breath. And once you align the focus on some breathing, just even basic nature of breath, you're moving inwards. So with a few more moments, the emphasis is on the belly, Breathing, so simply soft belly, but moving belly with the in and out breath. It might be audible for you. Now start to scoot your feet closer in and place a block between the knees and the block will be narrow. So when you place it there, you likely have to have some adequate amount of kind of muscle storage to hold it, but it's, it's, it's certainly uh, adaptable for all of us to find that, that ability to squeeze into the block. So I want you to feel the nature of how the tailbone maybe changes when you squeeze into the block. So the tailbone centering, there's an arch on the back now. So the hands are going to stretch back overhead and the emphasis is simply to be present with the arch of the spine. And as your back muscles begin to release down, so it's creating a very minor pelvic tilt, I want you to feel your feet push into the wall and let the back kind of scrub into the ground. So you're going into a very small cat-cow. So it's an arch of the spine, the tailbone presses down, and then a very small scoop. But I still have my back on the floor, all of it. Maybe a tiny bit of my tailbone lifts up, but it's very small. So I want you to start to offer the motion of the feet go a little higher at the walls, only so high you can still keep your block. And then, you can either keep the blanket or move it away. 
And you're gonna lift up your hips and move into massaging through the spine and arriving at motion. So we're going to move our arms forward towards the wall. And as you lower down the spine, feel the hands touching open. Inhale, lift the hips, stretch the arms or feel a mild reach of the arms, not anything over done. And if you notice how the accumulation of movements in this bridge series changes the circulation up into your neck. So this is one reason you might move your blanket away if the flooring is comfortable for you. And I find I can work with it in my neck, but some of you might want to go without it because it does tend to create almost a dullness in that upper spine. And as we lower down the next time, feel the feet lower down at the wall, turn the block to the next setting. So it's turning to the, the second setting, so it's a little bit wider. Now that might put your feet out, but as long as the toes point up, this time as you push into the wall, we're going to feel the lift of the hips and maintain that position. And as you push into the wall, feel that firmness at the back of the legs, feel the hands down besides you and dedicate the focus into that touching of the back into the floor. If it's too much lift, you can always lower down a small bit and stay with the back a little bit off the ground, but not as high. Okay, now you're gonna remove the block and slide it flat under the back of your pelvis, kind of tuck it in to that space. And then as your feet are to the wall, door one is feet stay at wall. And door two, we bring our feet off the wall and lift both legs straight up. As elementary as this positioning is, feel if you can move your legs so they're in unity, right? So you have a connected at the thighs, at the knees, at the feet, a uni leg. And if you can move your elbows open and perhaps the hands back into cactus. So experiment with how the neck is supported. Maybe the blanket is adequate for your lift of the neck, maybe it's too much. So using your intuition and with the legs united, feel the feet resting. So they're not trying to force a flex or a point neutral. And as the back enjoys this flush as well as the legs, enter into a phase of that belly breathing once again, where your abdomen feels like it's trying to lift with the inhale and relax back to neutral on the out breath. Now feel when the feet separate and then of course the legs will motion so they're independent even though the the muscular quality in the legs probably feels relatively balanced even if it's shaky it could be an equal shakiness to the legs so what we'll take is as the knees bend what we're going to go to is baddha konasana right so that means feet together knees out so you're going to bring the feet back down i'm going to recommend that you lower them into the floor the wall is fine, but the floor might be a little bit more comfortable. Two opportunities for Baddha Konasana. You'll need your second block, okay? And what you might try for is, this is one, you're on a block already. For those that our back feels comfortable with this, if your back is sensitive, don't do this one. If your back is comfortable with it, your feet are together, your knees are out with the block under your sacrum flat. If not, you push down to your feet, you lift up, the block gets slid out, and then you 
Isolate the focus of your feet close together. Get the blocks in the sides of the legs and then bring your knees out and your feet together. But be sure those blocks are pretty attached up the sides of your hips and they're kind of stuffed in, okay? So with the shape of the ribs, bring your hands together, interlace your fingers, whether you have the block under your sacrum or both blocks under the legs. Push the palms and move into the length of both arms, but think of as the movement occurs in your arms, that train of circulation from your lats and your back, your wide back muscles, and feel the experience of the elbows bending, and then trying to lengthen them. So does it feel good for you to bend the elbows to lengthen? This is all a grounding pattern these first 10 or so minutes to um, prepare us for some gentle standing series of poses. So this all helps out with the layers of movement we'll explore or possibly explore. Okay, so feeling if it's a little intense on the legs, if it's too much pressure with the block, you might turn the blocks, pivot them so there's a little bit more of a contour touching your legs, yeah, it might be softer. Sometimes the challenge with that is they slide. That's, that's the argument for using towels under the legs. Okay, so the next few moments, we're gonna shift our arms so they move back up and down. And we'll take the blocks, so we'll use them here for this adjustment. You're gonna scoot towards the wall, a little closer, slide your blanket in now. So you certainly want a blanket. I want you to feel when you put your left foot at the wall and your right foot to the left knee, that there is enough space between your left buttock and the wall um, that you can explore a bit. So I don't want you so close, even though that gives you a deeper stretch likely. So I have this angle with my left knee to my left foot. So my foot is fairly high up, but of course, if I look, to my knee, I can, I can barely, barely see my left foot. Like I have to really strain. So I do want your foot to be kind of hidden. Take the other block, or one block, I guess, and place it to that right leg, and you're pushing that leg away towards the wall, and use that pressure in just the right amount so that your back can still melt into the floor. So if the right corner of your back, of your waist into the sacrum is slightly tilted, then you know that you're working on aligning. So I would keep that block secure if your arms get tired or they do get weary on it. Then put your elbows a little closer into your center or one on the floor, one on your body. And maybe you move the block a little bit higher up on the inner right leg. So my block is at the um, mid setting. Some of you will need it at the low setting because your arm is longer. And having something to touch onto the leg, an object is helpful. Okay, now let's take it. So you have the wall to apply support for your left side of your spine. So we're gonna move into a hip crossover. And I want you to be very cautious here on the supports for your, your back muscles and your knees. So when you move the block aside, that was a very short hold there. You're gonna cross the right leg over the left, left foot lowers to the floor. That's why we need space for the wall. And then your knees will shift to the left side and place the leg so that it maybe touches to a block you could use your bolster or a blanket and stretch open the right pec, the right side of the chest, feeling where your neck can turn to the right arm and the left arm can stretch out as well. You could also put the left hand to the right leg to keep that attachment secure with the leg around the knee. Now, if the weight is 
not really predictable where you're pushing the weight. I want you to emphasize lengthening your spine. So remember bridge pose when we lifted and lowered the back off the floor. Can you aim your hips towards the wall? So it's almost like a pelvic tilt, although you're on your side, right? So it's a side pelvic tilt. So that means the pelvic region, especially pelvic floor, feels like it's motioning together, right? Versus apart. Well, it's pretty close together, at least right now, as I can tell. In my own world. Okay. Give it a few moments here. Prepare the hips. Now, if the right arm is spaced out comfortably, feel if you can keep that right arm out of the game right now. Let it just be, maybe it's not a limp arm, right? But it's opening the right side of the chest. So the muscles in that right side feel that concentration. Okay, now I'm going to encourage you to slide that block a little bit out on the left side, uncross the legs, and have the knees close together so the legs are stacked on the left. They may not be perfectly stacked because they're not likely going to uh, run that way with the knees atop each other, but they're stacked. And that's a little different, but as we push into both arms, we're going to lower and shift our, onto our back. Bring your knees into your chest, hold the back of the thighs, squeeze the legs in, breathe. Okay, now switch sides to the right foot to the wall, the left foot to the right knee, open out through that left inner leg, noticing if the, I suppose the closer you are to the wall, it's gonna feel more stretch in your left leg. So if you know that you could push back and away from the wall when we get to the twist, you could certainly change it up here. But as we put that left um, side connected to a block, we place the block to the left leg and push with our hands. And the spine might get a little twisted on this position. It might uh, push the left side of your back down. So I want you to be a little vigilant on centering kind of your brain, like you almost move your brain a little to the right. So that right side of the spine is supported. It doesn't hurt to get good alignment here. And if you feel when you close your eyes, uncertainty with the back, push into your right foot, feel how the knees may move a little to the left, even the right leg, to hope, hopefully help the left thigh starting to open up the hip. And then put that block down now I happen to have my bolster on the right side. So when I cross my left leg over the right, I'll probably use that for my height under my knees because it's just there. But you could use a block. I imagine the height when it's at the second level, it's the same as your bolster. Usually they work pretty, pretty much right on. But it depends on your bolster um, uh, style, doesn't it? Or your bolster product, whatever it is, it does, they're different. So when you stretch open that left wing, feel how you can clutch onto the left leg with your hand, or you can bring both arms out and then let your head rotate to the left side and opening through that left armpit chest. Feature the sensation of from your rib breath to the armpit chest, how open that experience can be in your upper part. Right, really high up in the heart space. Letting your eyes close. Okay, feeling maybe the ribs with the breath, the belly with the breath so far. Pretty comfortable sequencing, huh? Maybe it's 25 minutes on our back, maybe 30.
Okay, now as the knees are right side, right, you're going to uncross the left leg, but keep them both to the right still. And if the bolster seems too high or the, blade, or the block, you can always kind of move it away, scoot yourself so that your knees are touching closer to the ground or your leg, right leg. That might give you an advantage of the sensation through the left side waist. So find the, the finality of this shape, this twist shape. And then as we progress, right, which we will work with the belt around the ribs next, I want you to notice the, the circulation, I guess the communication you're creating with your rib cage. And then as your knees move back carefully in center or you hug them into your chest, that seems the right thing to do. You're gonna get your belt and we'll place it around our rib cage. So I'm gonna to have to scoot myself back on the, towards farther away from the wall. So my left foot touches to the wall and the leg is straight. And then I'm gonna put the belt overhead. This is how it works for me in the second I'm doing this, but some of you might put the belt around your leg and scoot it up under your ribs too. So that's just how it went. But as I get the belt around my rib cage, I'm gonna lift up the right foot into the belt I'm going to really tighten this down. So we'll spend a few moments in review of standing poses on our back. Okay. So when you do standing poses, this whole, um, we're kind of, uh, kind of predisposed to some of our habits. So what we're working with is having some common ground here to start from. As if you're going to learn how to stand into them today. Like your first, this will be your first standing pose experience. We'll try that. So before we get there, I want you to feel how your ribs have the belt where you want them. Okay, so my belt is low on my ribs. You might want it a little higher up. So if you were to touch with your fingertips, for some of us, we'll place the belt a little bit higher, just as long as it's not like right around the, the breast area. You don't want it to be so high up that it's going to be tissues that are getting pressed on that it's not going to be necessary for our work, right? So connect to the ribs with your belt and then get the tension on the belt so taut that the leg is straight. I want you to try to create a straight formula, feeling the musculature at the leg grip. And then as you go into that level, if you can get a block, <laughs> You place it to the hands in between um, wide. Yep. And then reach it back overhead. I think you can still see me. I'm not on a screen. So push into the left foot, but I suppose it's both feet going. Feel the arch in the spine. If the block overhead is on the floor, that would be ideal. And then my block overhead is flat. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the block on the ground. I'm gonna take my hands off the sides of it and rest them on the top of the block so my palms are towards the ceiling. So be careful in your back. If you have a moment of, oh, that's just too much, you bend your right knee, that's what you do. And you center that right side of the back and just stay with that. And that's fine, you don't have to straighten the leg. But the leg I want you to try to keep straight is a left leg. We usually would do this with a sandbag on our thigh, but we're trying to get kind of the basic raw um, roots of our practice. So I'm not gonna add that today. If you want to, you can add sand to your left thigh. But feel the, I just don't want to. Feel how your back musculature, especially below the belt, can widen. And then I want you to switch the foot up into the belt. If you have sand, that's a little challenging, right? You have to change your arms and everything. But switch the foot and play fair with your legs, how far you are from the wall. See if as your right foot comes down and touches, does it feel equal? Or do you feel like you have to scoot down farther to the wall or farther back? So that'll give you a lot of information about your alignment, right? No, not a ton, but it does give us some information about our spinal column on the right side and the left side, and also our postural habit. 
Also how open you are in the back of the left leg and the front of the right hip bone. So create a little drive here with pushing into the right foot, engaging in the left leg. And if the spine is like laid down to rest, let your spine kind of lay down. Maybe even visualize the spine resting into the earth. And really sparking focus on that belly breath all the time through the session today. Any gestures you need to do are fine, whether you need to fling your arms around or make sounds or anything, we won't know. Okay, now with the foot pushing, you might find that the upper leg, that pressure can cause some stress in the back. So that's why I find a call to bend the knee a little bit can be helpful. And then when I bend my left knee, I still feel the surface of my foot. So before we turn over, I want you to spend a moment sampling and scanning, feeling the bottom of each foot, especially since they're in a different placement category in the moment. One's at the wall, one's in the air, but they both have something to press towards. So feel the spine laid down. See if you can be with your spine resting, but engage your leg muscles. And we'll, we'll keep that awareness when we come up too. Maybe. And now as I reach the hands, let's see, let's move our block over to a side. You're gonna want the blocks on one on each side um, of the mat, wherever they're placed, it doesn't matter, but they're on the sides. Now, as you get a hold of your belt, bend the left knee, whatever leg you have up right now. And then when you take the belt off your foot, I want you to hold it with both hands, slide the left foot down, bring both feet to the wall. And if you can reach your hands inside the belt, so my thumbs are braided um, inside and the webbing between the thumb and the index is, uh, the webbing has the belt. Bring your arms overhead and press into your feet. Right, reclining mountain pose. So I'm pushing into the feet, I'm reaching through the arms. Okay, now feeling when the feet press, start to bring your knees to bending so the feet slide towards your seat and then move, wriggle out of your belt. And I want you to carefully let your knees windshield wiper, uh, get a feel of your hips also in that windshield wiper pattern side to side is all it is. And then let your body roll to the side and then come up to all fours, taking a blanket and place it to the space below your knees. Place the blanket so much support that when your knees are on top of it, it feels like it is real cushion. So if you have your blanket in a little flat um, height, that's okay, but give yourself some comfort. And then when we bring our balance into our hands and our knees, I have found lately uh, that I like to do this with a block under my hands. Of course, this makes it a little easier on my shoulders and my back, So, but not everyone will agree. So you can try it if you have um, if you have really small blocks because they are different sizes. Then it might not work as well because you want your hand to touch most of the hand touches the block, at least the 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 palm, right? So when I come into a cat pose, I want the back now to feel as if it's supported by my feet touching the wall. So when I round my back, I feel my chin move in and I work with the ebb and flow of the movement of the spine and the neck. And then start to flow your hips back and come into an arch spine. So alternate the flow of arching and rounding the back, breathing. Now you're breathing across the back. So the blocks are optional. Take them away if you don't like them. 
Please don't feel like you've got to use these blocks. You might try it out and scratch it. You can scratch your blocks. <laughs> okay, now next time you come back to table, we're going to push back for one downward dog. We're going to lift the knees and then scoot the heels towards the either the base of the wall or up at the wall. They're both good ideas for your feet and health. So I can see a reason for either one, but the Specific balance of this is that it's not really a dog pose. You're going to kind of walk, uh, shift your knees and shake it out as much because there's a firm space behind you. It seems to not hold space for a lot of wiggling. So when I have my heels towards the wall, I'm going to lower my head down. If you have the blocks, you'll notice there's a lot more space now because your arms are longer with the blocks. So there's a reason for the shoulder support here. Now breathing into the back space. Okay. Now come back down to hands, knees, and push the blocks away if you're using them. Okay. And hands go wide forward, and we come forward into a variation of upward facing dog with the wall behind us to push into. Okay. Now Lower down onto the belly, all the way down to smooth out into the back muscles. But feel if you can be in this perspective with your elbows by your sides and locus, almost locus pose we're going towards. So the elbows by the sides. And if the chin is point forward and your neck is comfortable, maintain that. Otherwise, bring your chin down and your forehead down. Okay, and this feels good to me to bring my forehead down but I'm trying to keep my elbows by the sides. Slide the hands forwards, elbows down on the floor. And then as I reach the chest forward into Sphinx pose, I have my elbows very far forward on this version. Trying to figure out how to make this pose happen in my spine. So create that strong arch all the way through the tail, all right? So if you're in a sphinx pose, you have connection to the tail. And then feel what happens when you slide your hands closer in towards your center. So you might notice here that circulation in the back changes when your elbows pull in closer. Your feet can go wider at the wall. That will make it more comfortable in your back for certain. So if my feet are really close in, it tightens along the, the sides of the spine. They're a little wider. It's, it's a very minute change, but it's, it's enough, I'll take it. And then we're going to move our elbows open so you'll feel the ribs, the width of the ribs when your elbows widen here. Yeah, so this is an interesting breath fo focus right here in the rib cage. And so when you slide your hands back, elbows by your sides, lift up your chest. And then fingers open, push to come up. And notice how you've got to pull your body weight upwards and then transition your hips back. And let's take some blocks under our hands and step with our right foot between them and lift up your back knee. Just let it be like a low lunge, but the left foot pushing into the wall drives support into my spine. Right, so I love wall, wall for my standing poses because each foot touching towards the wall connects all the way into the back muscles supportively. Right, in the middle of the room, it's not as, it's not the same. So feel that support through the wall and let go of the ideal that the knee needs to be over the ankle or it needs to be perfectly lunging. Focus on the strength in the legs, the feeling of connection to the earth with the foot and the wall with the left foot. Okay, and now straighten out the right leg a bit here. So scoot yourself maybe a little back and lift up your blocks so they're, they're still grounded on the floor. But I've turned them up all the way and I'm gonna lower my left heel either a little bit up at the wall or it's down at the base. Now, most of us will find lifting the heel at the wall is ideal, a little more comfy. Okay, lowering it down to the floor, you'll likely have to turn it out a little bit to get there. So I'm gonna go with heel up 
and then my right hand to my sacrum and stay with simply being very busy in the right leg stretch. So my right leg is pressing and then maybe you turn a little to the right, like truly a little, turning the waist towards the right and feeling the connection back into the left heel. I feel the right heel 100%. <laughs> but the left heel, see if you can drive a little energy back through that leg. Okay, if your left hand is getting really tired from this process, reach the waist forward like you're trying to stretch your heart towards the, the top of the mat away from the wall. And then good, turn back down so your hands are both on the blocks. And now as we shift our right hip a little bit under, you're going to step that left foot to the right foot and observe forward bend. So feet are wide, very wide and comfortable. And then we lower down our ribs to our legs and perhaps you let your head sweep down all the way through the brainstem to the crown. Your hands could be on blocks or you could swing them forward and let them relax. Use this as a experience of lengthening in the back by letting go. Right, so the pure focus, and I feel the legs sensation differing right now. They're not the same sensation because of the last pose. So noticing the lift of the hips and the weight of the brain down. Okay. Now with the breath, Exhaling and lengthening through the back body. Begin the bent process of bending both legs so you can feel the, the pitch of pressure into your heels and then bring your hands to your blocks. Now, as you step the right foot back, right, I start to feel that it's a little easier, right, if I come into my lunge from from already being up versus being on hands and knees, a little, little easier. So on this side, I like to still start from where we began the last. So we're gonna lower our knee down and we have the left knee driving a little energy forward. So see if you can cultivate a habit of noticing and observing what's just the right amount. So it might be less than this, it might be, um, for you more helpful by moving your left foot a little farther forward, feeling the arch of the spine. All right, for each person will be a little different. Feeling the front of the right thigh. For some of us, the back knee will be off of the blanket. It's up to you. And now as we start to lean a little forward, we lift up the back knee, and then we stretch that right heel towards the floor. So for me, it's gonna be lifted at the wall. It's a little easier for my leg and my calf. But for some, you might put the heel towards the floor. But if it's a position where you're struggling and you don't really feel the completion of the foot on the ground, then stay with it up at the wall. So you have something to look forward to. <laughs> okay. so. The left foot, if I looked at, at the legs, they're not in the same track, right? They're on two different planks. Keep the length in the um, reach of the blocks up. The blocks are high. The left leg is lengthening fully. Left hand to the small of the back and turning to the left. So rotate the waist. See if you can manage the focus here through the back foot pushing into the wall and the left hip reaching just out of the leg, right? So it's almost a little, it's an outer leg experience. It's an outer hip experience. Feel as the circulation in the low back kind of has a nice pocket of strength in your back muscles. 
And maybe you lift your left arm up for fun. Maybe you decide to keep the hand on the back and stay very thick with the hip. Breathe. Now turn, but we're going to stay focused here with the leg expansion. So let's take the block carefully on the inside of the left foot. Turn to your right, so you're going to have a wide stance. And when the right foot is touching to the bottom, it's at the bottom of the wall, right? It's not lifted up and somehow walking up the wall. But we have our feet in a wide stance. The toes have more of an inward turn than an outward turn. And so keep that focus. Now the hands don't do that inward turn, right? So when I put the blocks low, I'm gonna lower down my upper bones and reach my hip bones back, okay? So energize the tops of the legs like you're pulling up the kneecaps and then let your arms find a wide stance as well. So they're stretching open. And it's like a wide downward dog, right? So my head lowers down. Now I suppose this is one where you might notice when you have the blocks under your hands that you get a greater stretch in your shoulders. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to get at when we're doing using the blocks under our hands for those other poses, hands, uh, cat cow. So this is something where I notice when I have this elevation. It's different when my hands are on the floor. I don't have as much armpit chest stretch. So I love that, that armpit chest openness. Heart and lung meridians, right? So feel that circulation. Head lowers down. Emphasize brain down. Okay, now slide your blocks. Well, actually, you don't have to slide your blocks. You can move your weight towards your hands. And when we turn the blocks up a bit, one height is probably plenty to get yourself back to whatever normal is towards the center. And what I want us to do is put the one block, well, just put both blocks towards the left. So just kind of scoop them over to the left side. And then bring your feet a little closer, the left foot in. And place your hands to your hips. If this blanket is going to be a distraction for some of your standing work, you might push the blanket aside off your mat. And we'll do a short standing series here with very minimal props. You're going to come upright and turn the left foot away from the wall and kind of feel how this turning of the foot is a turning of your hip bones and your waist, right? So you kind of, do you want to feel like full body? Yeah, like a full positional uh, shift with your hip, right? The left hip and the right hip too. So we're going to bring the hand to the right hand to the wall, closest hand in, stretch the left arm away and keep a real basic nature of this lunge. It's like I'm in an upright warrior pose, okay? You're in your earth warrior pose, how about that? Okay, so get a feel when that left knee is above the ankle or so, what you, get, you gather it to be that way. And then feel when that lift is through the spine. Now, can you bring the left elbow down to the thigh, up as high up on the leg as you can connect your left arm, not necessarily your elbow, but your arm. And then bring your right arm either a little bit higher towards the ceiling or let it rest on your back. Go with what feels like you can absorb the stretch, right? As much as you absorb the strength, because strength is the weight bearing part. So I'm gonna give everybody two choices on this, this phase that we're gonna work through. So this right side is starting to peel a little bit open. Okay, so door one is to be here. Okay, door two is we're gonna turn our waist and you might even go eventually to door two when you're ready, and then put that block besides your left foot and put your hand onto it. So that's kind of the next phase of this one, which I would likely kind of stay with to keep this right side waist open. 
Okay, and phase three is half moon, right? So that would mean I'm gonna slide my left foot in closer to the wall. But of course you have to be careful of your back muscles when you pull the foot closer. And then I would bring the block forward from my little toe side of the foot forward, and then try to get my right foot up the wall and then turn that right side open. Now, of course, this block under my hand needs to go out so I can find my balance. But heck, you might decide, no, I'm coming back to the second pose, <laughs> okay, or stay at the second pose. And maybe you get a little winded with that pose and you turn your torso down towards the leg and stay with that connection. So find your pose path. And when you're moving into that steady strength with that left thigh below, you wanna work on this openness of this right side, pure and simple. So not required, right, to stay long in this half moon pose, but feeling the, how you're curating, right, this inner leg energy, right, the inner leg, the pelvic floor. So now we're coming out, thank goodness of this pose. <laughs> okay, we're gonna shift down with the back foot, right? You gotta come out a certain length into the legs. And now when you turn, I want you to take some care to bring that right arm down and you might use your blocks to get yourself all the way to the floor. But you can also take your left hand down off your block and then we'll pivot the back heel and we'll lower the left leg back and the knees down. Now the blanket would be nice here, huh? <laughs> you can add that and you'll press back to a child's pose of choice, which could be seating back towards your feet or lifting up your hips a tiny bit and stretching back your waist and your hips, but not sitting on your feet. So two choices there. Feel the breath in the back space. Take some lengthy breaths here. And now slide the hands back in and then shift our weight to hands and knees, toes under. Maybe you need a blank hand to the knees, go for it if you need that. Hands and knees, cat cow, rounding the back. Chin to chest. From meow to cow. Meow cow. So as we alternate the movement, feel if you can get the strength in your stomach that it's almost like you're recruiting your back muscles now to strengthen the core. So meticulous motion, arching, breathing in and rounding and then see if you can make the differences between those two smaller so not as aggressive of a movement so not that you were aggressive but make it a little smaller movement so the back is able to relax okay so now when we come forward with our right foot we're going to take our blocks and we'll lift up the back knee We'll do our last standing pose here. So the outer side of that left foot is against the wall. The right knee is above the ankle. And when your right knee is supporting the bones above it, I want you to notice when you bring your hands up to that right leg and you come up in this stance, this variation on the side, that the bones above your knee, right, are stacking into the leg all the way to the joint, right? So turn to your left and bring the left hand to the wall and push into the wall. And maybe your stance gets a little wider. Maybe you work with this accumulation of feeling this inner leg stretch. So you're on your right leg forward, but when you do have that inner leg stretch, you're probably feeling with that leg behind you that there is a pull on the inner leg. There's a there's an intensity stretching there. So feel breathing, not just muscling, right? But breathing. So use your wall to really hold you up. Yeah, let the wall hold you, pushing back into it. And then begin that process of 
kind of peeling away from the wall. So you move their right arm down to the right leg. Maybe you start with kind of a quasi lunge. You're not quite dedicated to it yet, and that's perfectly fine. Left hand could be to your hip. And this might be what you stay with. Is this something you can feel you can deepen and go a little bit further with to stay here is a good choice. Or to lower your right hand down to a block besides your right foot, turning the ribs to the left, gradually feeling that waist circulation, right? This dynamic in the torso. Breathe. And those that want to go to the next phase, keep in mind you want to have your, your grounding force through your feet. And so if I take half moon, I have to slide my right foot in. My pelvic floor really feels that engagement, right? There's a little bit of an electricity there. So when you do come up with that left foot, I want you to notice that the connection of the foot at the wall is really important that you push into the wall versus trying to daintily move away. You want to push, okay? So use that left foot. Good, nice. Yes, get the block up. <laughs> so use that foot to the wall and then feel how the inner leg circulation has to activate to hold you up. So continue that experience of that holding up pattern. Be sure that the standing leg is, is not hyperextending. There you go, Floyd. Everyone else is fine with it, but I can see. But yeah, that's nice. It's still straight, but you can feel that if it presses back, that your muscles don't actually get in a peak performance, right? So a little bit of micro bend is good. Yeah, and then you might have the ability now to lift up the left arm if you haven't explored. You don't have to look up to the arm, but you could feel what that could be connecting the dots for your spine into your mind, half moon mind. And then as you start to lower down, you want to feel how that left foot lowers. It's off wall, right, to begin. And then when you stretch the left foot back and the block under your right hand, turn the waist so the left arm still rotates, even if the hand is on the hip. That's fine. So you still have the spine circulation very steady. And I want to be very careful where we come to from this position. So when you turn your torso back towards the right thigh, Feel if you can bring the blocks, both of them up to the same high height, and then turn that back foot so the heel is at the wall. It's turned, actually the back foot is at the wall. The back outer left side of the foot is completely at the wall. And then find that lunge. Back foot is at the wall, heel is not up. So the foot is on the floor, left foot. Get it together, Nicole, huh? Is it the foot up the wall or is it down the floor? It's down the floor. Okay, now pivot through your torso to that right leg. So feel the weight of the torso move to the right thigh. So that we're in a stance to weight into the right hip. Pivot the back heel so you can step the left foot to the right. Change sides for a moment so we get both sides. Back foot, this is a lower warrior one without the arms up. Right outer foot at the wall, left knee above the ankle. Steady. One side might feel pretty easy going. They do have differences, huh? <laughs> so feed into that back heel. If your hips are kind of bouncing up a bit, see if you can... Stay steady with the knee over the ankle. And now weight goes down, right? Gravity has you. So let's take the blocks out and bring the hands down. Take one more downward dog with the heels tilted up at the wall, the hands pushing the floor away, and your head between the arms, perhaps. And maybe it's a little forward or tucked in, but feel the hands push the floor away and that continuous drive into strengthening your upper back. Okay, now as you start to come back to table, so knees down, 
I want you to gather your prop so you're going to get some, you're going to get your prop nest all set up. Okay. So take a blanket stack on the distancing from your wall. So it's pretty far forward as if you had a big arm reach to that blanket stack. And then move your bolster in. Okay. Now take it so you're going to move down to your left hip side sage with the right side up. And if the legs want to be kind of stacked and that feels like really nice in your back, you could stay with them together. You might want to reach your right side back if you have a block to put on the inside. Sometimes after all that standing work, it does feel different. You might not need something underneath. You might be a little more open on the leg channel. And then as I gather my block overhead, right, my focal point here is head on the blankets and right side waist lengthening. Yeah, so sandbag could be on this right side and or they could be on the ribs or the hip or neither, okay? So come into the shape at your own time in your own pace and awareness and feel the connection of the breath through the center piece of your body. I think of actually the center piece I think of as my, um, from my heart space kind of wrapping around the torso, but your center of gravity is your pelvis, right? So that's, not necessarily true, right? Depending on where you're thinking. Uh, but just the general sense of moving out from center. And so the left arm is heavy. The right arm is reaching, but it finds a place to rest. So if this is strain on your arm or your shoulder joint, then you place the arm so it's either open or it's lowering down and resting closer to your left arm. So you choose overhead or open or resting next to the arm. And you might sample all of them. Feel the eyes sink back. Breathing fully through the ribs. Now feeling what is at the lowest part of your bone structure that feels touching down to the floor. Is it the hip that's touching onto the bolster? Or is it the knees, you know, that feels like your lowest place of touchdown? And really let that sink into the ground. And now when we shift the shape, Let's let the upper arm find something, a place where it's very comfortable. It might be opening for you. It might feel comfortable for your shoulder. It might be lowering it down. Okay, but we're gonna simply move so that our hip helps us shift into a Baddha pose, right? We did one in the beginning. We're gonna do one with our spine lifted this time. So it might feel like a different pose completely. But when you shift your sand away, we're going to shift our weight down to our left arm. So turn in towards the bolster like you're looking down to the ground space to come up and bring the knees together and then put the bolster on top of the blanket. So pivot that bolster so it tips up and then you have a little bit of a slide. Get your block so they're both next to your legs turn towards the wall and then bring your knees open and your blocks under them for certain this time. So I didn't have such an easy time keeping those blocks held by legs last time. So I'm gonna hook the block under my thigh and the back of my calf and see if that works a little better. Seems like it's always a work in progress here. Okay, hopefully it's progress. <laughs> so 
Feel the spine and maybe sand on your ribs, maybe sand free. If your arms can stretch open and your feet can also have a little bit of sensation of the wall, whether the, the ball of the foot touches the wall and it feels like it kind of spreads the toes, that can be really nice. And then let the spine really relax into the bolster. Yeah, these final spinals that we're doing um, will amount to having the legs up, right, in completion. So we want to kind of, uh, kind of gracefully um, let the texture of the back soften here. So feel the open space of the chest, which is really important for our back space, not to be overstretched. If it's very tight in your chest muscles, you can slide your hands down closer to your sides. Give it some time. Take a few more moments here. Now your hands sliding closer and find maybe helping the blocks shift a little bit out. Maybe you don't need that, but when you come around to your second side sage, um, you might have a really good intuition about how to flow from one to the next, but I haven't considered. So as you roll, you wanna get a feeling of your body really touching your bolster, right? You'll lose the bolster contact, but when you come around to second side, final side sage, we're going to let our body kind of lean into it. So letting yourself kind of go and drop into the props, let them support you. So not worrying about such precision, but particularly feeling supported um, with what's under you. So with the block over, with your head down. Now this side feels like I want my blanket a little higher under my head, so I'll just take it. I think that's a good uh, lesson from Iyengar Yoga is take the prop, right? Just take what you need and keep using that. And you might find that you slide some things to a lower height with um, the phases of breath helping you loosen up. And it may not be like congestion, you think of that word maybe respiratory wise, but it is body congestion, right? That is That occurs. So we're working on reducing that or inflammation. So use anything you need under that left knee if that's helpful for you, or use your sand on your side. If it feels like it's too much, then remove. And then let your mind center on your side stretch. Pure and simple. Now this way when we get to legs up the wall or legs up the couch or whatever you have, you'll feel like these core muscles have had a, a nice reaching pattern, right? So there's some circulation bubbling up in the center of the body. Circulation bubbles, bubbling up. Now with the layer of including the hip connection to the ribs, armpit chest, head weight, feel the left arm open, or maybe it slides down comfortably next to the right. However you wanna to start to move your bones to the next level. And then all this openness in the upper zone that we've been working towards, it's like the circulation is going to flush down into that pool. So sometimes legs at the wall is called waterfall, right? So 
We're going to roll into the right side and carefully scoop in your knees and come around so that you get your body to come up. And then we're gonna find our final pose. And I wanna include the focus here that when you get your bolster um, to the base of the wall, that you have it and enough distance before you get up there that you can get your knees to bend, you can kind of feel your back and what that circulation is when it's in a forward motion. And then what we do for our back health in this pose is we have our blanket set. I'm gonna use this as my, the model today. I'm gonna to have my blankets. So I have one lengthwise. It doesn't have to be like a quarter fold. Could be flat actually. You don't have to have it even risen up. And then another blanket on the other side, which for me, my, I know my head's not gonna be all the way down there. So I'm gonna stack it up on top. So it's kind of a T that goes right out of my bolster, a T shape with my blankets. The blanket T. Okay. Now, if you're going to do a chair shoulder stand, I know some of you will take that shape. So going into your inversion, sit with your rear really close to whatever space you're gonna put the legs up on. So whether it's a a couch or a bed or a wall and you're going to roll up so you want to get the legs to lift and it's, it's simply to get the back of the pelvis on the bolster it's not much more than that now we're using all these blankets so it's a little easier on the back but you might find that it takes you a little more time to adapt to it it's like hmm, it's kind of different there's a little more height under the back muscles and it might be more chest opening for most of us to have that. So yeah, make it all cozy. Don't take, take anything out of consideration to get comfy. And let the spine center on the little lift of the blanket. If you don't want the extra blanket to be that high, you can always pass on an opportunity and let the throat open. And then the arm sets out. We have a sandbag option on the feet. If it seems like that's too much to add right now, you can put it on your ribs or your belly. You choose. Might be good to feel on the feet. It does create that drain down through the legs, the leg drains. And then the elbows find that form of cactus, that kind of swivel of the arms and kind of feel how the leg and the arm parts do kind of swivel out of the hip, the legs do, right? But the arm part, I guess you could connect it to your hip in some value, but it's swiveling out of the shoulder. So eyes draw back. If you have an eye pillow, you might put that over. So you have that curtain of darkness to calm. The curtain to calm. And those important positions of the inhale, filling the lungs. And then exhale, sweeping and emptying the lungs. So feel that normal operation of the movement of the abdomen, which is the movement of the diaphragm moving down, but it's actually in this position having to ascend because the legs are up, has no choice. So it's challenging to the lungs, strengthening. So giving that little bit of vascular challenge by being still, which is really interesting for your vascular system. And on the exhalation, letting the breath pour out, slowly seeping out. And the belly resistance is zero, relaxes back towards the spine. To give a few moments there. Observe and feel. You know, notice when the back muscles 
have this mild arch. If you have all these blankets, it's kind of nice because there's that simple equal space from the lift of the bolster, right? It's not as um, pressurized, right? There's not as much of a division between that, the hip and the rib cage. So as we shift maybe our support under our feet, I still want us to keep that elevation of the legs for a little bit longer. So start to shift your feet off of the wall. So the feet flex. And then as you bend through the legs, you're gonna feel the knees separate. And as that weight positions back towards your torso, you're gonna lift your hands and move the sandbag away and then find your feet apart at the wall. So they're not pushing together like Baddha Konasana, right? They're apart. And this is in some way exactly how we started, I think. This is simple knees separating, helping the back muscles. So feel that separation. And then when you collect your weight into the back of the pelvis, let the thighs move towards the sides of the ribs. And of course, holding onto the legs is a natural um, habit with that position of the knee so that you can clutch the legs and feel that completion of stretching your back space. So can you find a position where you feel complete with the sensation in the back? Now, if you're in chair shoulder stand, it will take you a, a different wave of movement to arrive here to maybe getting your feet on the chair, and maybe then that is where you feel the back releasing when you're all the way down. But let's take a few more moments where you fully release the back. May as well do it now, right? Because likely if you keep that as homework for later today, it might be skipped. <laughs> Okay, now when we do a good two minutes with it, you'll notice at the end of the time that you could slip into being relaxed once the legs adjust to stretch the back of the pelvis. So how you come out of this is I think kind of interesting. The typical, typical is to roll and kind of shove yourself up, but you know, there's nothing wrong with sliding back. You know, it's a little easier on your back form. And then you can roll to the side or roll to the side and coming up. But I want us to end with a breath phase together, if possible, and focus on the emptying of the lungs together and come into the finality of what the practice is and um, let our body be up. So our hips are up on a blanket or a bolster. If you want to sit next to the wall, if your back to the wall is good too but find where there's elevation of the heart center and where that heart center is moving forward of the ribs. So there's no caving in, right? It's just moving forward. And present to yourself the hands so they relax on the thighs, the space of the throat softens, and the mind space can either stay up in space or it can center down so the forehead shifts and tilts. It's like you're tilting your screen, your brain screen down. Likely your eyes will probably stay in more of a closed internal experience. And then let's bring our hands so that they lift together and we have this awareness of connecting with the palms, and let's exhale completely. So we let all the air out. Inhale together, feeling the support, bowing to this practice that you give to yourself and each other. And with exhalation, bowing into the space behind your heart. In gratitude, namaste. Thank you. Okay.